You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I said Baum today, Ryan. Baum. <laughs> Michael Rosenbaum. Making your dad proud today. Making my dad proud because I usually just say Rosenbaum. Baum. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, listening to the podcast today. Got a really good one. And I, I appreciate you. Listen, there's a lot of podcasts out there. And you chose this one as one of your podcasts to listen to. So I hope you're having a great week. Um, if you want to subscribe, that would be great. If you're here for Sosie Bacon and Kyle Gallner, Gallner from uh, Smile, the hit movie Smile that's out there right now. Subscribe, write a review. It really helps the little podcast that could. And um, write a review. The handles are, Ryan? At Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. That is absolutely correct. And uh, you can also go to the Inside of You online store for some great merch. There's some really cool merch out there. Autograph scripts from Smallville and tumblers from Inside of You. And also uh, my Patreon, patreon.com slash Inside of You. Join. Uh, top tiers get uh, shout outs. They, they, they help the podcast immensely. I don't know what I would do without them. I say this every episode. Um, but uh, top tiers also get – there's different tiers, right? And the top tier gets packages every few months, letters from me, uh, YouTube lives where I they can ask me questions, just tons of stuff. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you and uh, join today, and I'll send you a message. Um, I need to send messages because it's been a few weeks and I've been busy, but uh, I'm going to send those messages. Uh, so thank you. Um, what else? I got some uh, cons coming up. End of November, um, going to San Francisco. Then I go to Columbus and Pittsburgh. So I'll be looking for that. Galaxy Con, I think, just at the very end of November into early December. Three cons back to back to back. So check those out. They'll be on my Instagram soon enough. Come say hello. Meet me. Um, that's it. I'm also on Cameo. Join that. And what else, Ryan? Anything else? Anything else going on? Ha- happy Halloween. Yeah, happy if you, Halloween. If you noticed, Ryan, we're having, you know, we had Tom Holland, director of Fright Night and Child's Play. We had Chris Sarandon from Fright Night um, and, and Princess Bride. We had, Today we have Sosie Bacon and Kyle Gallner from Smile Horror Movie. So it's been a horror movie month. And I like mm-hmm. that. And uh, this movie, Smile, I'm a big horror fan. And there's not many movies that scare me. There's not many movies that I find fun. Um, I watched tons of them. Mm-hmm. Smile was a really good time. Smile is worth seeing. I will say that. The acting's great. The story's great. It's shot well. There's some good scares. I recommend it highly. I got these two people on, and uh, we had a fun conversation. She was she was hilarious. She got the Jason, the Michael Myers. Yeah, she got the mask on. The Michael Myers mask on. Oh, wait. Weird. Jason Voorhees. Jason, yeah. Jason Voorhees mask on. She was walking around in it. I hope that uh, Jason kept that edit in there. Um, but it was fun. Well, she sat down immediately and started playing guitar. Some uh, Carol King. Carol King. So far away. Just out right out the gate, came in the room and started doing that. I just Nobody loved, has loved, ever done it. loved her energy. And you have a lot of guitar players in here sometimes and they resist. But she yeah. just went right. Before. She's fun. She's mm-hmm. feisty. She's adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Really, really liked her. And I love Kyle and Gallner. There too. Kyle was awesome. We love you, Kyle. He was on Smallville with me. Um, he's done so much. He's got some great stuff to talk about. We get into it. Um, so without further ado, let's just let's just do it. Let's get inside of Kyle Gallner and Sosie Bacon. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. It would be so fine to see your face at my door But it doesn't help to know you're just time away Long ago I reached for you and there you were Right Holding you again could only do me good Oh, how I wish I could, but you're so far away One more song about moving along the highway Can't say much of anything that's new If I could only work this life out of my way I'd rather spend it being close to you, but you're so far away. 
doesn't. Okay, yeah. That's great. It's really, really low. It's really low. Off the cuff. cuff. I did it. <laughs> Not off the cuff with the with the chords in front of me. <laughs> I can't read music. No. But you went to musical theater. What do you mean? I went to musical, musical? school. <laughs> musical. What no, do you call I didn't. it? You didn't? Well, I mean, I went to like a summer program at NYU where we were like, da na na, but nothing. I didn't learn musical theater, theory or anything. So. Really? Mm -mm. Were you a good student? Just cracking my Red Bull. I gave her a Red Bull. So like, she need, like she needs one, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> you made Kyle, mistakes. Kyle, imagine if I needed a Red Bull. I am like the most and like kinetically energetic. What do you think, Kyle? That Do I think you need do a I, Red do Bull? Do you think I have a lot of energy or do you think I'm more like down? Um, I think you have a lot of energy. I think it's perfect. It's not Coffee. overwhelming. Kyle has no. a lot of energy. And then he and then randomly later he'll be like, I was really sick the whole time and I was exhausted and I wouldn't even know. <laughs> I had Lyme disease. No, I know, but I'm saying- <laughs> Wait I, a minute. Wait, you had Lyme disease, Kyle? I wouldn't have even known because yeah, he was so- Yeah, when I went in for my wardrobe fitting and my prep and our, my rehearsal and stuff, I, like a couple days before that, I was like, I'm starting to feel not so good. And then I found out I had Lyme's disease. And then he just killed it every single fucking day. Were you exhausted? Well, I, was, I, was on, I was on antibiotics by the time we were And shooting. Ritalin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you're off it now? You, I mean, you don't have Lyme disease oh, yeah, anymore? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm done. He's I mean, because Lyme disease is something that could last a long time if you don't, you it's know. Like a ga it's like a gamble. People, Some people have it for like the rest of their lives, like a version of it. It's really weird. It's, it's a really, really weird, weird disease. Thing. You know what's yeah. funny is... I was told that I had Lyme disease. I was tired. I was this. I was that. And so my friend goes, <laughs> oh, so, oh, so she just God. dropped the Red Bull all over the place. Wait, wait. wait. And well, now it's dripping. It's okay. Just get a towel. You're, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> this is how it goes. So the Lyme disease, they told me, I, you know, I want you to see my friend. She's a doctor. And, you know, so they did all these tests. They have to do a certain test. And they, yeah. she said, you have Lyme disease and you need all this. And I was like, I don't know. So she started giving me these shots and all this stuff. And then I went to the head guy at Cedars, Caesar, Cedars, Cedars, yeah. Cedars, Cedars of infectious diseases. And I told, I gave him the test results. He goes, you don't have Lyme disease. He just like, so she lied. You, you just don't have it. It's like these <laughs> tests could come positive. These tests that they do aren't even accurate. They think they're at, it's, it's, it's a big controversy over it, but I just listened to him because he went to med school and all this stuff. So I just said, you know, screw it. But uh, anyway, back to you guys. So listen, Turned so out you're see. just really bored. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you got your headphones. Yep. 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 We're okay. Back. So guys, as you can see in my room, Kyle, you can't see it, but I've got the Lost Boys poster. By the way, Alex, yes. Alex Winter's coming in after you guys. Alex Winter. What? Yeah. Bill and Ted's and all that stuff. He's he's great. He's oh, the guy in the Bill back. Bill and Ted's. That's amazing. Hell yeah. yeah. He was the other guy I in like Bill and Ted's. Um, but this I have Fright Night, Evil Dead, Aliens, The Thing. I'm a big horror movie fan. Mm -hmm. And most horror movies suck. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have watched, I've spent countless dollars with horror movie nights with my friends. And we just, we watched them and we're like, another six bucks wasted. Yep, another six bucks. Five ninety nine for a rental, whatever. Oh, got it, got it. Mm. And so I, I like, have to admit, are you going to? Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? I know. Well, first of all, I didn't know you were in a Kyle, and we'll get to how we met in a minute. There is a five dollar Tuesdays in Glendale. Sorry. Really? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But I went to see Smile, and I didn't know you were in it, Kyle. Hmm. And I wrote this down because I, anyone who listens to this podcast knows I'm a big horror nut. Yeah, just they know it. And I'm always upset because, Ryan, you know, there's just not many good ones like I just said it. But this movie was not only scared me at times, but what a lot of horror movies don't do is they establish sort of a character mm. and a relationship. Mm -hmm. And by the time the movie's 10 minutes in, you don't give a shit usually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I cared about you, and then I I, I I began to slowly care about you as because because you don't come in till I mean you kind of like yeah, yeah, come yeah. in and then you're yeah. like oh oh shit and I won't give it anything away. <laughs> you can give it away now. It's out. Spoil. No, away. no. People have to go see this, especially if you like horror movies. Yeah. This worked. This is one of the few out there yeah. that works. And is it is it the number one movie out right now? Um, I think that Halloween 
beat it this past weekend, which fair, I get it. It's been around. You shouldn't get it because um, I, I honestly, I know, yeah. I mean, they're the worst movies ever made. Right, but you know what I mean. It's such a classic, and everybody wants to go and Classically whatever. Classically <laughs> bad. But it was number one Everybody's in two weeks in a row. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, we had a a uh, what do we call it when you binge on all the movies? A um. Oh, fuck. marathon. Yes, marathon. A marathon yeah. of all the Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. all the Friday the 13th, and all the Halloweens. <laughs> and out of Did like, you skip? <laughs> out of like 12 skip Halloweens, <laughs> it was like maybe two that were pretty good. I know. And it's like they keep doing it, and you're like, but people just, it's Halloween. You got to go see Halloween. No, you have to go They're see it. They're genius. Yeah, but also, the I th so Halloween is like the only franchise I haven't watched because when I was a little kid i was so afraid of it because my brother tortured me with the mask so i've never even seen the original really yeah see that's a good one but i've seen yeah i mean i i need to probably go back also your napoleon dynamite bobblehead that's what i spotted do you know he's in my horror movie nights what what do you mean john heater he plays napoleon he's one of my no best friends way. yeah uh, okay well i, I, I love him <laughs> he's and the I best love that movie. and he kind of talks like that sometimes like what i'll i'll sit there and go Jesus, this movie's terrible. And he'll <laughs> yeah. go, are you, are you talking like me? Oh and I'll go, God. yeah. He goes, you're just jealous because Lex Luthor doesn't have a distinct voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, we yeah. got alpacas um, this year. My parents got them. And I was like, I feel like Napoleon died in my vibes. <laughs> Your parents have alpacas? Yep, mm -hmm. rescue alpacas, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Anyways, wow. moving on. So why did you like it? Like, what? It, like, oh, did it scare you? It just, I, I always want to know what people feel. You know, it makes your skin crawl at times. You know that Got scene it. where you're in the room and then all of a sudden the girl's just standing there smiling at right, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you kind of like, oh my God, what's, what's happening? And right. what she does next is pretty, it's just like the right. build. Like there's a build. There's not just a sound that makes you go, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, a, yeah. a jump scare. It was... It was sort of refreshing. Got it. And you, you went through a lot yeah. with your character. I mean, that those are, movies are not easy to do or pull off. And you got to pull off that you're not crazy, but you're crazy. Right. But you're not crazy. Totally. It's so hard. I think it's probably one of like, well, Kyle, do you think, I probably think that playing anxiety, even though I'm always anxious Me too. in life, is probably one of the hardest, and I've always felt that way, like it's one of the hardest acting that, things because it's yeah. like i don't know why i can be sad or happy or whatever but anxious is hard so that so yeah it's tough it's tough do you, <laughs> do you guys i'll ask you know do you trust does it take you time to trust the director because when you're being so vulnerable you're mm -hmm. like do i look like an idiot doing this is this real is this or do you just let go and have learned to just say hey i'm gonna do my part and he'll tell me if it's bad well i think Kyle, the thing that I loved about Kyle, like right off the bat, which clearly as like when you watch the movie, there's such a connection between us. There's such a chemistry yes. and energy, like a real, like we're playing ball. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have like a super, you know, whatever. Um, and by the way, everyone, chemistry, if you don't get like, it's not like you need chem like you, it's not like chemistry off screen. I mean, we're, we're friends, but I'm saying like, what, if one person is a good actor and the other person's not, it won't look like there's chemistry. Right. If, you know, if as long as both people are good actors, it will. You know or what I mean? Or they're committed, really committed. Yes, exactly. And like, and also we like really got along like as friends. But anyways, so I think what I loved about Kyle is that I can tell he's the type of actor. I can tell that he is the type of actor who has been working um, long enough to under, to know how to make stuff. And this has nothing to do with smile, but stuff that isn't written well or difficult directors and still kill it. Yeah. Not that Parker was difficult, not that it wasn't written well, just that those types of actors are the ones that can do anything. You know yeah. what I mean? So I came in, and so did Kyle, I think, as I call it, director proof, as in no matter what the director's doing, you can do your job. And I think that it took me a little while to lighten, let up on that a little bit. Right. And then once I did, I understood, like, Parker had such a vision and was so specific and was amazing. It's just that I think I was a bit, um, I'm just, I I don't trust any directors at first. <laughs> Maybe you don't trust well, people at first. Well, definitely Well, I also, I also think, you know, you come into a film like this and when you deal with 
directors or or people who have such a, a specific vision, there is this learning curve where mm-hmm. at the beginning you feel like you're in a bit of a box because mm-hmm. it's like, well, you have to hit point A, B, and C because this is how the camera's working and we're mm-hmm. not going to follow you around and we're not going to do these things. You can't just be you natural. Know, there's yeah. such a specific way a mo- this movie was shot that – I don't want to say you're at mercy of the camera and at mercy of of the vision, but you kind of are because mm-hmm. you're there as you're there to tell this story and have, you know, and to show this director's vision. And and that can get a little that can get a little tricky, especially at the top, just because you're like, oh, so I can't walk to this side mm-hmm. of the room. I have to be right here. It's like, yeah, you have to be right here. And with Sosi, you know what Sosie was saying or has said before, there's a lot of like directly into the lens type of stuff, which automatically kind of puts you in a strange, a strange space. Um, Kyle is so so good. I don't know if you came in director proof as much as I think it's just, no, I'm saying we are like this or like a learning curve of like, what are we making? I'm sorry. I'm more saying director proof as in, if we did have a terrible director, we would be able to still do a good job. He wasn't at all. He was great. It's just that yeah. I know, and but Kyle, okay, he is the best at those things that are awkward as an actor, you know, like exposition, best person <clears throat> at exposition I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how he does it, makes it sound natural, <laughs> makes it sound interesting. Somehow you're forgetting it's exposition. If he needed to look down the lens, it wasn't this whole like drama. Uh, you know how like acting is basically feeling like a buffoon? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Doing a horror movie like that, you feel like a buffoon the whole time. Sure. <laughs> because for me at least, and I'm more insecure about it. Like, so I was like, I can't do it again. I don't want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's all. Did you think did you think it was gonna be a success like this? Or were you just kind of playing <laughs> a park going, Hey, all right, this guy's cool and got a vision and I don't know if this is did you honestly think I don't know if this is gonna work? I'm just doing it. Kyle. It was never supposed to go to theater. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, no, we made this for we made this for Paramount Plus for the t- for their for TV. It was no, never planned we did to go to not theaters think. ever, and they yeah. loved it so much that yeah. they put it in theaters. It tested yeah. so well yeah. that they put it in theaters. And by the way, that's only happened with one other movie I've heard. By the way, Kyle, I mean we met because you did Smallville. Yeah, you were the Flash, and one you came Flash back to the other. Yes, you ca- you came back. <laughs> And uh, we had some fun and, yeah. you know, I always liked you. Was was acting something you always wanted to do since you were a young kid or how'd you, how'd you get into that? Yeah, it wasn't anything that I necessarily like thought about. You know, it was never, I was never one of those kids who grew up being like, this is my dream. <laughs> I, um, I really just fell into it. My sisters were um, pursuing dance, like, you know, ballet and, and all that stuff. And um so our family was more on that route. But because of that, she went to a performance arts camp. Uh, she went to Interlochen, which I think is in New York. Mm-hmm. And um, she got a little bit of an acting bug because you had to do a theater performance. And so somebody pointed us in the direction of a um, like a talent manager in Philadelphia. Uh, and we just all went. And I ended up like reading a commercial for them. and they sent me out to my first audition that weirdly happened to be at an agency and I had no idea what I was doing, but they asked me and my mom to stay. And then they asked if they, if we had representation and we didn't even know what that meant. So like I got an, I got an agent off of my first audition. Like it was like this weird sort of snowball thing. And then as I got older and started, you know, watching movies and taking classes and really pursuing it, I just, I, I made the decision right before I turned 18 that this is what I was going to do. Like I, I, I had no higher educational goals. <laughs> you know, right, I, right, right. I was sitting there. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, everybody's getting ready for college. I'm like, I have like a two five. I'm not getting Dude, it. I had a two five. Like, two four or two two? Yeah, yeah, I felt like an old. I felt like an old um, uh, report card not long ago, and I was like, "Thank God I didn't Frame pursue it. anything." Wait, I Kyle. was not a smart child. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, man. So I, I ended up just doing that, and then 
you know, falling in love with it as it went and, and really just decided to make a go of it. So it was pure dumb luck. But somebody honestly. said that you you followed your sister to an audition. Or, or yeah, right. so she that's the thing. She went to that talent manager in Philadelphia, and what we were she, just there. I'm one of four kids. What does so she do now? Yeah, what does your sister do now? Uh, real estate. Real uh, estate. So when you yeah. – so wait, Kyle, when you – like got on set for the first time and stuff like to work. How old were you? 14. And so like, do you Jesus. remember it? Was it like, whoa, or was it like, Wah? yeah, it was, it, it was kind of like, there's few, th there's, there's a handful of times in your life when you get to walk into something that is just so new and so different and that you have no, I had no concept of what I was doing other than, I could say lines and make them sound real when I was young. And that's, you know, I didn't have any skill sets. I hadn't gone to class. I hadn't really studied or learned anything. I was just a kid who could talk, I guess. And they liked me for it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. The amazingly talented people who appear on my podcast and me, let's be honest, may seem like we have it all figured out but we obviously don't. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. A trained therapist is the next best thing. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be any simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash inside. Inside of you is brought to you by Geico. Geico asks, How would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Well, of course you would. After all, who doesn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all the things in your life, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. It just kind of happened. It sounds like this just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. And then, and actually, like the first him. set I was ever on, where people really took me under their wing, was Smallville. Um, wow. I was really, really taken care of on that set. And people showed me the camera and showed me around. People were very, very good to me on that set. So, how I old were you? A lot actually being there. Yeah, how old the were first you? Man, I was, my mom was still with me, so I wasn't old enough to be there by myself. So I had to be 15, 16. <laughs> oh, and my I was God. 30. And you were 30? Oh, my God. He's and my so, little yeah. brother. And so, how were people <laughs> nice on the closer? Just kidding. I'm just kidding, Kyle. Um, <laughs> yeah, I worked with your mom on the closer. <laughs> no, yeah. but wait, wait. Okay, so you he was 15 and you were 30. And you were, At was it time. out here in LA? No, it was in Vancouver. Vanc oh, God. Yeah. Okay. And did you, so you went with your mom and you stayed at like a hotel or an apartment or something? And Sutton then Place, baby. Sutton, Sutton Place. Place Hotel. <laughs> I didn't know they put kids there. It's a little, you know. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Cause so, see, and it's funny because the first thing I think of when I think of your name, first of all, I thought it was Sozy. Yeah. But it's so see, like, Sosie's on a vacation far away. How many times have you heard that? No, never. Sosie's on a vacation far away. Come around and talk. No, but that's it not over. the. Wait, I never it's knew Josie. that was. Oh. I say Sosi. Ah. Oh, thank God, I was losing my Josie. fucking mind. I was know. like, it's Sosi. I was like, Sosi, what? <laughs> Nobody ever said that to you, Sosi. No, but make? like, uh, like, like Kaiser, Sosi, Sosi. Yeah, Sosi. I don't know. I don't know. People don't really. That's I've never heard that before. Wow, you well, are original. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you, really, 
your parents didn't want you to act? No. They really, I mean, I can understand. No. Because they knew what Hollywood was. They'd seen the good. They'd seen a lot of the bad. Yeah. Did they really try to keep you away from it? No, I think that's like a very, it's a story that's been like, kind of like telephone, you know what I mean? Like one article said it and then another one. And it's funny, this person was asking me the other day, like, so did what did they like, knock scripts out of your hand? <laughs> and I'm like, no, it wasn't like they were that against it. They just didn't say either way. They wanted me to figure it out on my own. But that being said, the reason I said that when I was like, 19 or whenever the fuck I said that is that I saw I think and this is still true I saw how like unglamorous and sort of painful it can be to be an actor and I yeah. therefore never I like idolized it or it wasn't like this dreamy thing that I was like working towards like I just want to be a star and be on a movie like it wasn't like that for me and I don't know if that's an annoying thing to say but that's just what's true I saw the bad side of it as well well your parents I mean Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon I mean classic (laughs) Classic. (laughs) but I mean Friday the 13th I mean Friday the 13th the horror movie the knife through the chest remember yeah of course the neck the neck the neck neck. great CG on that one oh yeah great (laughs) CG but they seem, I, I don't know if I'm right, but they seem the most normal as, as you can be mm. as a couple in Hollywood. They have withstood the test of time mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. And they've stayed together. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that had no, to be. No, yes, they have. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm not doing any reveals. Could you... I mean, I don't know. I don't have like a metric for normal. Were you around celebrities, big celebrities your whole life? No, no, no. They because kept you away from we, that. No, like we just lived in New York. So like. I grew up in the city in Manhattan, so like for New York, it's not cool to be an actor right. or a producer. It's just not like it's it's cool. Like it's not what all the rich kids do, parents do. I'm like you know what I'm saying. Out here, it's more of a thing. So no, I wasn't around big celebrities ever. I think I met mm. Howard Stern once, and I was like, oh my god, because <laughs> we listened to Howard Stern from when I was like four years old in the house. Like I remember. <laughs> So inappropriate. Like, we, it was always on. So I thought he was cool. But I I didn't know. I did not. It wasn't like that. Really? It, I, it wasn't like what, like, maybe mm. Willow, Willow Smith's what life is probably like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. those kids are real, like, like their, their parents are celebrities and have kind of chosen to live that put world. them out there. Yeah. yeah. But, like, with us, we didn't. No, I don't. Were you like once you were old enough? You st- did you start going? I'm gonna watch everything they've done. I got to see my parents and everything. No, I'm not a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Why you don't want to see your day? <laughs> no, I, I um, I have not. Maybe I'll do that tonight. A marathon. No, a marathon. I yeah, do didn't watch it when I was younger because honestly, weirdly, like I tried to watch. I watched Balto, which is a animated movie that the he animated voices. dog movie. <laughs> yes, it's a it's but he voices the fucking Balto. My dad. Mm. I didn't see Balto. It's called Balto? Yeah. You need yeah. to watch that. No, I'm kidding. It's just like a Disney movie <laughs> that like nobody's seen. But I watched that because my dad was like, you should watch at least one movie when I was a kid. And it upset me so much when like anyone was mean to the animated dog. That was like his voice. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't even. So from then on, I just didn't. I haven't watched them. Did, I want to watch Stir of Echoes because is that similar Stir to this? Stir of Echoes is dark. Yeah. That's it, a good one. But that's like kind of the same. It's just him the whole time, blah, blah, blah. I think so. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Got it. But Maybe that I'll is, watch that. Yeah. That's, but yeah, you seem pretty normal. I mean, I didn't, it's funny because I just watched the movie and I was just like, oh my God, Kyle, I got to get Kyle on the podcast. And I go, and I got to get this gr- girl. She's great. Yeah. Because I didn't know you. I mean, um, and then I looked looked you up and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. That's the daughter of so-and-so too. And she's super talented. That's a good thing then. Yeah, I, did, Kyle, I had no idea. But Kyle, am I normal? <laughs> Kyle, is she normal? Be honest. Be honest. Neither, I don't know if an actor can be normal Neither of us are normal. normal. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. There's like a sliding scale of normal. I wouldn't consider myself particularly no, normal. No, he's not. He's not normal at all. I will not, say, neither of us are normal. I will say that you have, you grow a tremendous mustache. Thank you. Yes, you Thank do. You it's unbelievable how I can't grow anywhere else. And I, I, this look at it. me. This is this no, takes no, forever. It's just disgusting. No, but this is this for real. This is it. It's like musketeer time all the time. 
There's never great. anything here, nothing here. It's the, only a mustache. And the this camera loves strap. Kyle's face. Like, yes, you know, people who's just like their faces just work on camera. Yeah. Kyle. It does. Your face works too. My obviously. Face, I mean, yeah, sure, but I'm, maybe, I, but I'm. I, it's hard for me to be. It's hard for me to be like objective yeah, about right, my right. own stupid face. But uh, Kyle's, yes, <laughs> Kyle's for sure. Were you? Do you guys I ever do. deal with? Because I talked to other actors about this. Do you deal with anxiety? Do you deal with not only anxiety, but do you deal it when you're working? When you're like, when you get, first get a role, are the nerves going? You're like, I want to be great. I've got to be great. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, of course. We all do. Matthew McConaughey was just talking about how Dude, he gets we nervous. All do. Oh my and you god! You feel like you're going to get fired. Do you? I mean, what goes through your mind? Table reads, oh, the worst. Table reads are the worst. You think? I've never been fired from a table read, but my friend John Heater from oh, he the got, yeah. he was fired off a table read. So did read. Scoot. Scoot got fired off a table read that twice. Oh. Twice. Sad. Ugh, also, I did a sucks. pilot. Want to know this? Yeah. I did a pilot for Sci-Fi. The Magician's pilot. Mm. Six months I waited to hear if it got picked up. Fired. <laughs> really? And the show went. They didn't tell you? Too late? Maybe they didn't know. I don't know. You look like you're missing an arm. Sorry. I'm so weird physically. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kyle? Do you get do you get uh, anxiety or, or you get nervous? Or you get Yeah, nervous? I think I think the day you don't get nervous is the day you don't care. And I think mm -hmm. that's a problem. You know what I mean? I think, I think you should always be a little uh, within reason, you know, if it's like crippling, I mean, I, you know, from one set to the other, I'm sure things are going to be more nerve wracking, but yeah, I still get nervous. I get anxious. I still get excited that first day you're going to walk on and, you know, especially like what you're talking about that weird earlier, like that weird thing of like, say you do get just, an offer and you have a fucking idea that's left of center and you show up that first day and nobody's ever seen you do it. Yeah. I mean, that's really, that's, <laughs> Everyone's that's pretty like, nerve wracking. Uh, um, yeah. Or you can't yeah. get the lines out and you just yeah. keep stumbling and it's in your head. The and dream. You're like, I'm sorry guys. Fuck. Yeah. It's my I, bad I, dream all the time. I never say sorry though. I don't ever want to be that vulnerable to them. I just want to, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm angry, but I don't get angry <laughs> with them. I That's just, called straight white male privilege. No, I'm just kidding. No, no I just go, <laughs> Not, Not saying sorry. No, no it's not that I'm, I, I'm not yelling at anybody. I'm totally I'm at no, myself. No. I'm like, come on, what the fuck? I'm just joking because we the, always say sorry. What the fuck's the line? God, I'm sorry. I do say I'm sorry. <laughs> you, do, you do. Oh, God. Wait, so Kyle, I have a question for you real quick. D did you feel yeah. like this, this part was like a challenge for you? Because that didn't seem like it. <laughs> I, you know, I think every part's a challenge. To me, the challenge and the thing that I wanted to accomplish was what me and you were on the same page with when we mm. stepped in there. It was like, we have a small window to establish these two and their past and what they've been through. And that will allow us to make the interesting choices we want to make further down the road. So mm. that to me was sort of my my kind of, not fear going in, but the thing that I really wanted to make sure you know, that I was most nervous about is, you know, because I didn't know you, we hadn't met yet. I didn't know how you wanted to operate. And then when we got there and and, and we spoke and we rehearsed, you know, we were both very much on the same page. You were incredibly page of, disappointed. Of how do we, <laughs> yeah. how do we, how do we make these two, you know, and establish the relationship? Because the other thing that me and Sosie wanted to accomplish was we wanted to at least try to find a little bit of humor in something that was so fucking <laughs> dark, dark. And I think two people who know each other and mm -hmm. each other's bullshit so well going through a situation like this, I think can be kind of naturally sort of funny. Mm -hmm. You know what I think? Uh, it was unique in the way that you seem like a secondary character right off the bat. You seem mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, it's the ex. Okay. I'm like, oh, Kyle, he has a nice scene in the movie. That's mm -hmm. great. And, you know, I love Kyle. <laughs> yeah. he was, Dinner in America was wonderful. He so was good. freaking so amazing good. in that. You guys have to go see Dinner in America. I, I, I tweeted Which, about it, whatever. It's Hulu. great. It's like Napoleon Dynamite Hulu. on acid. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's yes. on Hulu right now. It's on Hulu. Hulu. Watch Hulu. it. And also, I got to see Charlie Says. Oh, I mean, okay. And that's Matt a, Smith. Yeah, no, no. It's a good movie, actually. Yeah. It actually is. I love is. that stuff. It's a weird scary fucking movie but go ahead it's about charles manson right yeah and you were i played one of the, patricia um krenwinkel she was one of the ones convicted yep of doing the murders yes you have that mischievous kind of look do on i your really face. i have a little bit of a culty vibe especially with long dark hair 
<laughs> yeah, you do have a little culty vibe on when, you. You got what, a culty aesthetic. Yeah, when said so they put like long brown extensions in, I was like, okay, culty. Anyways, go on. Sorry. Um. Oh, so what I like is that this character, and you have to be likable right mm-hmm. off the bat. We have to sort of like you, like, oh, all right, all right. And it's funny how her own, is it your fiance? Mm-hmm. Or your fiance doesn't really believe her and he's just not supportive and it's just like he's trying to so you understand where he's coming from like like i would think that to him like oh my gosh i'm mm-hmm. with a woman who's out of her mind i don't know what to do mm-hmm. and he gives up on her right and she has no place to go other than mm-hmm. to you and i thought that was a really cool little twist there mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. worked and it kind of propelled the movie and you were with you guys and and me and oh, kyle cool. are actually that codependent <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? No, no, but I'm no, but but like, do you know the people that like, like Kyle and I are both the type of people that would be like, if I called him and I was like, look, we got to bury a body, like, you know what I mean? You just the, <laughs> wait the, a minute, what? <laughs> no, I'm just in. saying, <laughs> nothing says team building like getting rid of a body. No, but and you know how like the character of Trevor, my fiance, he's got like boundaries and like a life plan and stuff. Kyle and I, I think like in the movie and in real life, are kind of like. I don't know. What do you think, Kyle? I mean, save me. It sounds like I'm crazy when I'm saying this. <laughs> no, I, I think there's, you know, I, again, like JT, you know, playing playing this, that fiance role. I think that's that's more of a logical mm. place. So you know, I think more people would veer that way than the way that Joel went. But I'm much more of a Joel in real life anyway. Like yeah. if somebody comes to me and says some crazy shit, I'm like, whatever like yeah. let's go like, like if i was if like need look help, i need sure. to move in with you and your wife in vermont and uh, Come on. your kids he would be <laughs> like okay out. like I would honestly, you really say okay 100 if what tell me if she wanted to move in with you and, and your, your wife, wife for a while and their kids no yeah. no there's no way she wouldn't you'd have to ask your wife and she'd say what are you talking about i'd have to ask my wife but i honestly think my wife would say yeah i know that he would it, like, like i would say yes i live alone <laughs> i love okay that's fine i love this house it's sick <laughs> thank you it is i like this house it is it is fun can i and try this on <laughs> you can totally you want to try it on really yeah I- take it off she's gonna put the it's it's halloween this is airing uh oh, pretty much on halloween spooky season. so go ahead and put the friday the 13th mask i want to come over and see how oh there you go hang on a second <laughs> hang on did you were you guys rebellious growing up in terms of like you, you could see how um yeah look for yeah. me my parents were so i talk about my dysfunction you know I, I no one really listened to me in fact my brother called me one morning and he says he says i had these nightmares about our family and then i wrote down things that i remembered and i go oh okay and he started reading them to me and he goes and then when i got to you when i started writing about you all i remember is and then there was michael Nobody ever listened to him or paid any attention to him. Oh my God, stop. And I was on the phone and honestly, a tear came down my eye and I and I, I was sucking it up and I was like, and what made me sad was the fact that someone acknowledged it. Like yeah, he sure. acknowledged the shit you. that I, someone, it was, it was crazy. So what, are you middle? I'm middle. Okay, that's, that's tough. And then also, what's your sign? <laughs> Cancer. Ooh, ooh, what are wait, you? Pisces. Oh, we get along. My, of course, we're water. My dad and my brother are cancer, and so I think uh, that's hard. That's really, really hard. I'm sorry. But were you? Yeah. But what I was thinking was, you know, I was, I wasn't a bad kid. I got into some trouble. I had that teenage angst and whatever. Did you guys? I'll start with Kyle. Did you have any of that going on, or like, I'm an actor now. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna powder my nose. I, 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 I'm gonna Bieber. be a dick. <laughs> I didn't start drinking because I was an actor. But no, I, uh, I. Yeah, I mean, I I started drinking at 14. Uh, me and my friends were like, you know, punk and hardcore listening skate rats that would steal alcohol from people's garages over the weekend and, um, you know, run around the golf course and throw the flags into the water hazards at night and like weird shit like that. We were, we were just like suburban bad boys. We were just like looking for trouble all the time. You know what I mean? We were always kind of pushing back and. Um, Ne'er-do-wells. You know, I, I my parents are great. <laughs> like it wasn't one of those those things. It, it just was like we were just always 
in trouble kind of in one way or, or another, we were just, we're always sort of looking for trouble. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But with your parents, were you sort of like rebellious with your parents and like, cause I have some friends in Indiana and I grew up in a weird little town. Let me tell you, I, I'm not, <laughs> I pretty of, much love everyone I've ever met from Indiana, which is random. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people I know from my neighborhood who are in prison or went to okay. prison. There's one hey. one for murder that I, my mom only let one person spend the murder. night at my house. His name was Tom Wagner. Murder and he the ended murderer. Up killing someone. And <gasps> then and I was like, good judge of character, mom. Uh -huh, no, right, no. Uh, no, they um, have the worst judge parents, don't crazy. they? Crazy. And but I remember rebelling against them. I was yeah. No, but were yeah. you, so were you like that with your parents? Because I have friends in this neighborhood. I mean, I, de I definitely were, gave my parents a hard time. There was definitely a window where we were like constantly butting heads mm -hmm. and at odds. And I. I, you know, I think a lot of that was growing pains and puberty and, you know, I have, I have other stuff, like I was tiny in school too. And, and I was dealing with like my own shit a little bit where like, I have like, I've died. I have like, I'm, I'm like OCD, ADD, ADHD and Tourette's. So I was always like, oh, really wow. Ticky. And like, if you'll watch this back, you'll see me make Faith. I, I think I do that too. Don't you think, Ryan? I'm ticky. No, not that I've. Seen. Yeah, oh, thanks. You're a little bit. I've I've noticed a little bit. Have you? But yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But it's like move around. It I'm used fidget, to be like fidgety. voice fidgety. stuff. It, it used to be like 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 like, like voice stuff. stuff. That's hard. Were people like judging you and making fun of you? Um, sometimes a little bit, but it was also like it just was exhausting on me and yes. like wear on me and like little things that i didn't even know how to put out where like suddenly i would develop a reading tick where like it would be if i didn't say the sentence perfectly in my head i would have to start over so like two pages of a of a assignment in class would take me over an hour to read because i couldn't get it right so like things were frustrating and were people aware of it that they help you were people patient with you did you take uh, medications my, or my parents were uh, you know it was more i was more the generation it was that generation where they just fucking medicated everybody uh, yes oh my god yeah they're just like they like also Adderall, needed Ritalin. to be medicated and they didn't so i would me. i would take pills and i'd fall asleep and like in the middle of class uh, and like weird shit like that and then finally i hit a certain so age where bad. i just was like i'm done taking this shit i'm just gonna deal with it and then I started acting and acting actually really helped a lot with all of that to cool it all off. So it was like a combination of things. I was dealing with my own shit and I was always kind of pushing back. We were always in trouble. Me and my parents had growing pains, but like, you know, I was never like super, I'm sure my, well, that's not true. My <laughs> dad at one point looked at me <laughs> not long ago. It was like, there's like nine years where I just didn't really like you. <laughs> so like, All right. <laughs> Probably well-deserved, but wow. we get along really well now. Like me and my folks get along really well and I'm, I'm tight good. with my siblings and you know, it's, I don't know. It's like just teenage angst, mm -hmm. I guess, but probably a little more elevated. I never like tipped into drugs, but I was getting really fucked up and drunk and all that shit for like a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. So see, what about you going up? Um, definitely tipped into drugs. I'll tell you that. No, but I was, a, <laughs> I was, a, I was a bad kid. But it was like my family's super close. By the way, I just want to say, very, very close family. My brother's like my best friend. Um, we're all we all love spending time together. Always have. It's just that I was bad. Well, I grew up in Manhattan, so there was just a lot of drugs and a lot of alcohol. When you like, say drugs, you're just talking pot or maybe cocaine and other no, stuff. Oh, no. Like, yeah. Dr Real like drugs. pills. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, like, I won't get into all of them, but all of them. Um, <laughs> and so, because Whatever. it's New York City, you know? Um, and I mean, my parents were super, like, strict about money. So... <laughs> So like, but all of my other friends had like endless money. You know what I mean? My parents gave me like $15 a week in Manhattan as my allowance. No, a month, a month, $15 a month as my Manhattan allowance. So what I, because they were like, it's not your money, it's our money. You know what I mean? They, it was Smart. great. Yeah. But um, my friends all had like limitless, you know? So anyways, we did a lot, but I kept it secret from them, which I think was another kind of hard, like for them. Did they ever find out? Of course, like they've found out over the years and I've told them and all that. But like, yes, little things would happen. I think it was just, it's almost worse, I think, probably for a parent that 
they're keeping it a secret. Um, so I feel bad about that for sure because I think I really scared them for a while. But now, you know, it like <laughs> yeah, everything, me too. <laughs> yeah, he goes out and wash. But um, I was going to say something about. <laughs> Kyle, I was going to say. She's diverting the attention. Kyle. No, I'm not. Yeah. What I noticed, I just, what I noticed about being on set with you, Kyle, is that like you would have ticks and stuff, but like once in a while, but never while you were in a take. And I was that's, like, how no, the that's, fuck? That's literally what I mean. Like the thing that really helped me get it under control was acting because I couldn't. Like you just weren't allowed. Yeah. And but it was it just almost like happen. you could shift. Like, my mental state would have to shift mm. or I wouldn't be myself mm. or whatever. So for those two, three minutes at a time, I didn't have to be me and it would like turn off. That's I awesome. I know how that goes. Wow. It was wow. very weird and, and it really helped me get a grip on it. And then, you know, age helped me just come to terms with the fact that it's like, just you're just going to fucking be all over the place a little bit. Yeah. Just let it happen. We all are. Fine. Have you guys ever seen your parents cry? Because I've never seen my dad cry ever wow. or show emotion. Wow. Until, wow. until my half sister passed away two years ago. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's the first Sorry. time I heard him on the phone. But holy shit. Was it weird and scary? It was just devastating. I've never in my life seen any kind of emotion except anger. And mm. just distance, you know, sort of. And then hearing that, it it, it did break my heart. It was just a sh complete shock. Doesn't it make yeah. you feel bad for him a bit that he could never show emotion like before that? It's just old school sort of yeah, mentality. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, gosh, it must you know? be hard. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? Did you ever see your parents cry? Yeah, I've seen both of them cry. I've seen my mom cry a few times, and I I, I remember the first time seeing my dad cry and being like whoa <laughs> yeah like it really it really took me took me back not not to say you know my mom's feelings aren't as important it just it was more hmm. it was really jarring to see my dad like lose it and yeah. then it was like years and years and years later before i really saw i didn't even see it i heard it he called me to tell me his brother passed away hmm. and that was like I mean, I got, I hung up the phone and just, I lost it. Hearing him upset made me yeah. so upset. Yeah. Like it was, it's that, hard. That's how I felt when he was sitting there crying. Yeah. He was like, I, I, and he was just oh, hysterical. I know, I know. And I remember like, just going, I go, I go, dad, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm here. You know, I, I understand. I'm, I, you know, it's like, you just, how do you deal with have you? Have you seen your dad cry? My parents are actors, so they cry all the time. <laughs> Not a real cry. My dad, no, not as much. Like he gets choked up a lot, but I think he's a cancer. Yeah, he's, very, he's, he's sensitive. Gets emotional. But no, I, I don't. I actually <laughs> don't think I've ever seen him, heard him, seen him like, break down like that. Just choke up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Do you want to see it? <laughs> so bad. No, I really do. No, I honestly really, really don't. Like you don't. me and my. Well, It'd I break mean, your heart. No, it? no. Of course, I would want him to feel comfortable too. Right, but. Me and my dad are so connected. We're like so similarly sensitive, empathetic, like to the point where our like we just know, like uh, uh, I know what he feels and he knows what I do, what I feel, and I cr cry all the time. Do you cry all the time? Oh my god, yeah. And so when I think about how much you know, like real sadness he has, probably because I have a lot of it because we're so similar. I'm like, man. Hmm. I don't know. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, it does. I want. I, if I saw him cry like that, it would be really hard for me. But I, but he's welcome to. Obviously, <laughs> he's well, Dad. You're welcome to cry anytime. He gets choked up though. <clears throat> this is your invite. Yeah, I, I get choked up. By the way, uh, I know you guys just did a horror movie, and I guess Charlie says is also sort of a horror mm -hmm. movie, right? You've done some dark shit. <laughs> Mostly dark. Mostly yeah, dark I would say. shit. Kyle, you've done a ton of horror movies. I mean, dude, <laughs> Haunting of yeah. Connecticut, Jennifer's Body, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. Like my favorites of my era that I went to the movies and saw. <laughs> You're a Scream King. <clears throat> yes, you are. I'll take it, man. You know, it's, it's a cool thing. By the way, Jennifer's Body, who was in that? Megan Fox. Megan Fox. And, How um, was it working with Megan Fox? Um, It was good. You know, <laughs> it was... It was, there was a part of it that like my heart kind of broke for her every day because it was smack in 
Megan Fox pandemonium when mm-hmm. everybody was oh. just like so all over her that you could tell she was like so guarded guarded in it and it sucked because she was being sort of just like objectified mm-hmm. as a person by everybody all by the world that it, it, it that was hard but she was very nice to me um i had a good time working with her um I actually had a really good time on that movie. It's that was actually one movie. where you want to talk about showing up. And I mean, I, I, I read for uh, Johnny Simmons role to be the boyfriend and I didn't get it. So they just offered me Colin and I just showed up and did the voice with all that weird <laughs> shit. And they had never seen it. What did they say? And I, I, I did that first take and Karen came up to me and she was just like, Mm. <laughs> like, oh, dude, just do it again i was like oh fuck like it was it was pretty trippy but no man megan was megan was great i i, I, I enjoyed working with her and i'm really happy to see that that movie is actually kind of getting a second yes. life yeah all these absolutely movies. it was such pretty a great cool. movie yeah did you guys see the woodstock 99 doc yes so can you believe that's how so 99 like that's when i was like uh Don't say eight that. or something i was born in 92 so seven great but that's how people treated women like just that Dude, recently it was, it was horrible to it watch. was you awful it? it's like they were just for the taking it is like, horrible and some of those bands just when you watch it just piss me off how they got it going and like, i know it was it was hard to watch well yeah but just i mean i'm thinking about how when did you shoot that movie kyle oh boy i that was years think- ago Early, like I mean, early I, think I did that right after Haunting Connecticut, and I turned 21 on the Haunting Connecticut, so I was probably 22. But like, what year? I don't know. What was? Never mind. Years I found ago? it. 2000. Ryan. A little fairy. But I'm guessing 04. 2009. Okay. Oh, 2009. Still mm-hmm. bad. I mean, I don't think that like 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 you know what I mean. That era was just so uh, women were so objectified yeah. in like an like an almost insane way. Like there was no decorum about it. It was just like grab titties and rah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. anyways, that I can I can imagine. It was, it was, unfortunately, yeah. Um, what do you guys think of horror movies? Do you like doing them after doing a movie like Smile? After all the movies you've done, Kyle, is it something you're like, I would like to do another horror movie? I would like to, or is it something you're like, okay, I did that. I'd like to move on. Now, Kyle, I'm not going to spoil anything, but if there's a sequel to this, one of you, I won't say who or or Sosie, one of you could be in it, maybe both. I won't say anything, but sure. would you do a sequel or would you do a, another horror movie? Kyle and I are doing a buddy comedy wherein we are exes trying to solve a crime. Is this true? We want it. We, we want, want it. To, yeah. <laughs> We're we need trying to, to get, find a writer. <laughs> yeah, we want to get someone to write it on spec. But anyways, um, I I love horror movies and I love the genre. I love watching them and I liked be I loved like being in one. Whatever. I think it's just that that genre it it includes so many. Like I would say, you could have a horror movie that's a straight comedy with gore. You know what I mean? And people would say it's horror. So I think it kind of encompasses all genres if that makes sense like Shaun of the dead or you know what i mean yeah so of course i would do another one but i'm not gonna like exclusively seek out horror movies i'll seek out you know like as you know good characters and great writing and whatever so i don't know i don't set it apart so much i guess right because i'm just saying that after doing a movie like this you might have a lot of horror directors going oh oh i think i need to wait a little bit i think i need to wait a little bit if that's what you're asking Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a little bit just do something a little different next yeah kyle yeah, I mean, I think the nice thing is I think the stigma for an actor being in horror has been obliterated. I think you okay. like, Absolutely. That's 10 years 10 years ago it was a different thing, you know. Like when we made Nightmare on Elm Street or Jennifer's Body or Haunting Connecticut, it was like, "Hey, good for you. You're in a movie." It it didn't matter how much it made or mm. whatever. Um you just weren't taken as seriously as like mm. Yeah, now you could do TV, you could do movies, you could do whatever. You can do any yeah. series or like so, the most I mean, people thing. are now exploding. I mean, look at Anya Taylor Joy off of The Witch. Right. You know what I mean? Like, she's now fucking. That's so true. Like, even your career, Kyle, is a testament to how like it doesn't really matter because you can do cool indies, and no one's like he's the horror guy. No one yeah. notices you unless you do something that's good or exactly. something that people like or is making them <laughs> yeah, money. So, true. so that's what they look goes, at your commodity. The, red, the rest of it just yeah yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, Anyways. unless it's like a box office flop or something. But like that was that was the craziest thing to me. Like. 
thinking about Smile, how well it's doing, and then thinking about my career over the last fucking 20 years. And it's like, man, I have not had like the odds of getting in a movie in the theaters that captures like lightning in a bottle does really (laughs) well, especially now without being slapped into a into spandex into a superhero suit is like Mm. almost impossible never happened and horror is one of the only genres that delivers outside of that so i mean i would absolutely do another horror film again i you know i've done enough of them to the point that it definitely has to be something very cool or special or something that i think could be really cool um you know i'm not just going to jump on to another one but I'm not as cautious about doing another one as I used to be, you know, five, six, seven years ago, because again, that stigma has been kind of obliterated. It's Great, more just like, I have is it a good? horror movie that I wrote called deep in the woods and I'd love <laughs> you both to read it. Are you being <laughs> serious? I do. Have but a it's like, I have but a couple that's, horror but movies that I've written. Are we exit but that's solving the thing, a crime? It's like, is it, are there all dogs? that matters is, is it good? It has to deal with witchcraft and like, I am a witch, the tarot card reader. Cool. Are you? Yeah. You read tarot? Yes. You want me to do yours? Let me see if I have them. Uh, I don't know. I, I I might. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, what was it like? I have to ask because I'm watching mm-hmm. House of Dragon. What was Matt Smith like? He was like method. So he didn't really Charles. talk to you very much. Not really. Not really. Well, I mean, yeah. Like was he nice enough? You know, he was nice, but it was he was just Charles Manson. So he was <laughs> method. <laughs> Um, like you know what I mean? He was really like in the character, and the character is um like gregarious and charismatic and talkative and crazy, and that so it's not so in between takes he was kind of quiet because I'm sure it was exhausting. He did a fucking amazing Charles Manson. You gotta watch it. I gotta like watch it. Matt Smith is an incredible actor. I think like seriously, I think he's amazing, and I think. For them to cast him as Charles Manson was a bit of like a surprising choice. It's not like the first person you'd think of, but he right. did such a good job with the voice and the guitar playing and the singing. Yeah, I think it's a fu- it's kind of an interesting movie. You know, it's done by the women who did American Psycho. American oh, Psycho. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's it's an interesting movie. And we shot it at a place that looked, I mean, it was in Santa Clarita, but it looked ideal identical to the ranch so it was very creepy and we used like real rotten food like there was nothing real cigarettes there was nothing like fake about it wow you i got read paid. to be charles manson for did that you movie. you did yeah. for that one yeah yeah yeah. it did I, not go well <laughs> well i i don't think that's the one for you wow <laughs> i are wow. i uh only got that part because um someone dropped out so i found out about it the day before the table read and i was like fuck dude yeah did he improvise at all Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Was he like uh, kind of like doing time. this thing where you enamored by it or you're like, holy shit, this guy's like on fire? It was amazing. It was wonderful. Like it, he, um, okay, so I'm not good at improvising. It makes me feel like uncomfortable and scared, especially when I have to like monologue. You know what I mean? But he monologued like, like, but like in what Charles Manson would say. Yeah, man. Yeah. And we're going to do this, yes. man. And we're going to Yes, and we're exactly. Gonna love, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know who else was really good in that movie is Chase Crawford. He was great. Um and it was wild experience. Charlie says, you got What's what's going on next? What are you guys looking to do? Take a break or is there something in the works? What's going on, Kyle? <clears throat> um I, you know, right now I'm looking to just chill at home for a little bit. It's getting harder for me to be away with my kids. They don't like it as much anymore. Yeah. Um, so I'm being a little pickier. It would be nice to pick something up, you know, maybe sometime early next year, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then I have a movie that I wrote that we are currently pushing forward. There's actually like finally maybe a little bit of momentum movement and things happening um which would be very very cool uh so we're you know we're really i'm really focusing on that um you know i've like three movies that'll come out and sprinkle throughout the next year or so (laughs) oh kyle i have something to tell you about but uh you know i'm just kind of hanging out we're buckling down getting ready for winter time <laughs> out here so oh yeah that's yeah that's getting taking the shovel care of stuff, but can we shoot your woods movie where kyle lives so he doesn't have to leave his kids sure 
Maybe we'll do that. Uh, probably by could. the way, you did. You went to Brown University and you studied musical theater. It says that in Wikipedia. It well, must be Wikipedia true. Wikipedia is wrong. I went to Brown University for a year and a half, did so many drugs that I dropped out. <laughs> and I did one play and there was no songs in it. But Wikipedia Good for is you. always right. <laughs> um, what's next for you? Anything? Um, I don't want to take a break exactly because I haven't worked since I did a for five days on a movie since Smile. So I haven't worked basically at all. I would love to work. Um, but I do think that now I have to be like a bit more choosy. I did a movie in Kentucky, which I think is going to turn out be really cool. I'm directing a short around the holidays that I wrote. And, um, you know, just kind of like I do a bunch of other stuff. But I like... I want to get a job, but I, but it has to be like a good one. You know, I have to really like it. I'm transitioning from taking every single thing that anyone would allow me to do to like being more choosy. That's good. hard. Yeah. That's good. All right. This is called Shit Talking with Kyle Gallner and Sosie We're Bacon. We're good at that. <laughs> this is rapid fire. These are from my patrons. They're amazing. The top tier patrons get to ask questions. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you and join. And thanks for all the support. Without you, you know I couldn't do it. So here we go. Favorite song, Raj. Favorite song, movie, and TV show during 2022. Ra Raj? Sosie, go. What'd you say? Favorite song. Okay. Movie and TV show. And TV show. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Favorite TV show, probably The Staircase. That's effed. Fav favorite song. Oh, I, I like this uh, Bella White, this song. Some na -na -na -na. Just like leaving. What's the next one? Uh movie movie um ha, 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 ha. oh my gosh that's so hard i don't know oh i liked come on come on i really like come on come on even though i know that that my boyfriend's in it it's not the reason kyle oh yeah i have no fucking idea i like i have kids i don't watch anything me neither kyle uh, i like caught up on like kurosawa stuff this year that was like what i did oh wow <laughs> Yeah, well, he I went through the Criterion I, collection. <laughs> literally, like that's it. I don't know if I watched Criterion. <laughs> I don't think I watched a single movie from this year. This year. Okay. Well, moving on. <laughs> Smile. I'm, I'm, I'm a garbage person for this question. You're gonna Le have to move past. Okay, Leanne. Question for both. What is your all-time favorite horror movie? What is Le Oh, Leanne. She's it's a the person. I'm so sorry. All-time favorite horror movie. Um, Kyle. I, the Ring. The ring. Mm -hmm. First, first, mm. like theater thing. I got a couple that I'm tied for. I love 28 Days Later. I love Alien. I love uh, The Thing. Um, Jaws is one of my favorite horror movies of all okay, time. Okay, so you're just going around the posters. And <laughs> yeah, saying, I, have all those I love posters. The Descent. You know, I got a couple. I got, I got a handful that I'm, I'm pretty big on. All right, I like it. So, yeah. see, oh, you already said I'm right. ready. Ring. I'm not someone who has favorites. I don't know. Mine yeah, is really weird. The Shining, but I also oh, love The Shining. Me too. Fun, it's more you know. like The Ring was like the one that I saw in the theater horror, like jump scare. You know, it was really good too. It holds up. What? Blair Witch Project. Blair Witch. Do you know that we got um that tape, nondescript VHS in the mail? I didn't know mail. what it was, and I watched it by myself. My dad thought, freaked out. I almost out. shit myself. Oh my god! And we were in like in at our farm, and like my dad was like, "I just got this." He was like shaking, like I just got this movie. I don't know what it. You got it too. Yeah. I wonder how many people got it. Like, is it like? Well, my ex girlfriend of us? had it at her apartment, gotcha. and she was sleeping. And I go, I'm going to put this movie in, and she just fell asleep immediately. And I sat there going, "Is this real? No, that fuck? one is amazing. <laughs> it was Wait, the first credits. like <laughs> found is this footage. Like a snuff film, <laughs> dude. It's it's amazing. Okay, yeah. I love when the close ups on her face goes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Brett G, what's your favorite memory of Wes Craven? I worked with him too. My favorite memory of Wes was um, probably just the first time when I auditioned for him for uh, for Red Eye, like a long time ago. He was just a very, very. Will nice you tell to your me. kids to shut up? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm hey kidding. guys, uh, Michael no. needs to tell you something. <laughs> shut your yappers! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, that Beat and then it. I actually read for him. I actually auditioned for him again, and it was—I forget what movie it was for. But my reps had sent me the script, and I wasn't supposed to have it. And I knew all this information, and I started talking to him about the character. And they actually, 
pulled me into the back of their office and made me open my email and watch me delete it. Oh my god! Wow. That's After intense. my audition, you can go yeah. back in your in the folder and get anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nathan J. Did you look at people differently who smiled at you after making this movie? And also, I'm going to ask you, so see, how hard was it to get that perfect smile? Uh, mine? Yeah. I didn't do a good smile. I didn't do a good smile. Disagree. I- I'll tell you later. But <laughs> how, did I look at people differently? No, I did not. After shooting it, no. After seeing it, yes. Shooting it, it was just kind of like a part of all the other things, if that makes sense. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Jeremy C., what was it like growing up? Oh, we already talked about it. Jeremy C. wants to know what was it like growing up with iconic parents? You didn't see them as iconic. Literally iconic every minute of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> Little Lisa, what makes you smile? Everything. Everything. Kyle makes me smile. Everything. What do you mean? Like dogs, My kids. animals. Good answer. Yeah. Kids. Until now, until now, until now, right now, 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 the smiles are not their favorite. Kyle, you know what we just started trying? Putting them in a room with two chairs facing each other and letting them work it out on their own. Are you serious? Oh. Dead serious. Does it work? No, the room gets destroyed, but like then it's over. Oh my god, that would never work with mine. They would, they'd be a bloodbath. Fist the cuffs. That's amazing that you do that. Yeah. It's not like it goes well, but at least it goes where we're not like, I don't know, litigating it. <laughs> Uh, this has been a real treat for me. Me too. It really it was, was fun. really it was fun. Really fun, I, like you, so much fun. Yeah, you guys are great. You guys are great together. I could see why you had so much fun doing this and the chemistry, even though mm-hmm. you, you can't see each other right now. I can just see it in my mind. You can imagine what we talk doing. on the phone all the time, so it's, this is normal. All right, you know I, that's it. I don't really have anything else. I loved uh, being well, in, being inside of both of you today. <laughs> the show's called Inside You. This is a real treat. Guys, go see Smile. You know I don't like a lot of horror movies. This is so fun. It's scary. It's a great date movie. See it while it's in theaters. And do you know when it's going to be streaming? You don't know yet. No, we don't know. No, not yeah, yet. No you guys got to see it. I saw it in the theater. You can see have it in the theater, though. It's, it's so like the good. sound is really important. It's yeah. really good. It's really good. And thanks for so having crap. us. Yeah, this was for, really fun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. See you, Kyle. Uh, love that interview. I really loved it. I love talking horror. I love talking, um, you know, it's cool. I, I, again, I didn't know that it was Kevin Bacon and, uh, Kira Sedgwick's daughter. No, it just, she's, she it, it sure looks like it. Yeah. She, you look at her and you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I but, could see that, but I, she looks more like Kira Sedgwick, I think. Yeah. But I thought she did a phenomenal job and smile. Really good job. So see, I hope you come back. She lives kind of close her and her uh, boyfriend. Yeah. They live close to me. So, but yeah, she's paving her own way. And so, and absolutely and, paving her own way. And so, and, it's um, kind of a good thing that you, you didn't notice. That I, I had no idea. No, I didn't put it together. And then yeah. I looked her up and I go, Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I wonder if she'll do it. And then I asked Kyle and Kyle got her on. So, thank you, Kyle. Kyle, wonderful guest. Thank you for listening again. Join patreon.com slash inside of you. If you want to join Patreon, be a patron and support the podcast. We could really use your help. And also, don't forget to listen to Talkville every Wednesday. That's tomorrow. And Ryan and I will be here with Tom Welling talking about another Smallville episode that we'll review, and hopefully we'll hear messages from you. And uh, thank you for all the patrons for uh, becoming a patron of that and helping the podcast out. I'm going to give the shout outs now. Um, so here we go. Why don't we do this? If you want to hear the intro, you can, I, you know, I give you links and stuff to all sorts of shit, but we don't need to repeat that. Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast. Shout outs. Nancy D, Leah S, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Kristen K, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacey L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, Eldon Supremo. 99. More. Correct. Santiago. M. Chad. D. W. W. Correct. <laughs> Leanne. P. Janine. R. Maya. P. Maddie. S. Delinda. N. Chris. R H Dave H Sheila G Brad D Ray H Tabitha T Tom and Liliana A Talia I always forget W M M Betsy <laughs> D Chad D L, L. Marion Dan and Big Stevie W, Angel, M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Andy T, Gavin Hater. 
David C., John B., Brandy D., Camille S., Joey M., Eugene and Leah, Nico G., Corey, Patricia, Heather L., Jake B., Megan T., Mel S., Orlando C., Caroline R., Christine S., Sarah S., Eric H., Shane R., Emma R., uh, Jeremy V., Andrew M. Did we say Kristen K.? Uh, Kristen Kia, I love you. So if we forgot your name ever, don't kill me. I love you, Kristen. Uh, Zatoichi77, Oracle, Chris R., uh, Karina N., Michelle D., Amanda R., Amanda S., Jan B., Kevin E., Stephanie K., Lena82, Joel, and Billy S. Uh, again, guys, thank you for continuing to support the podcast. You really uh, are amazing, and I appreciate that. And I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. We've got many more good ones coming up, some good guests that I, I've been working on. And uh, thanks for all the support and love. Spread the word. Um, get more listeners. And uh, I guess that's about it. From uh, myself, Michael Rose, Mom in the Hollywood Hills of yes, California. Hollywood Hills, California. <laughs> Yeah. That's right, Taz. That's right, I am here too. That's right, Taz. He's taking a class right now on writing scripts. I know. I love it. He loves it. Right. Three hours. Holy shit. I love it. We'll wave to the camera. Hey, guys. Uh, I love you. Be good to yourselves. And please come back and see us next week. Um, all right. Thanks for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. We'll see you next time.